Hi folks, okay, we're back with uh, an update on how to use the Notary Public License Law. And in here, we're going to maneuver through the Notary Public License Law and look at some banking law and the rule about depositions that notaries are allowed to attend and witness. Okay, so uh, the reason this is important is not only for the exam answers, but after you're licensed, you need to keep a copy of the Notary Public License Law handy wherever you're going to be notarizing for several reasons. Um, but primarily the calls that we get at the Notary Association from people while they're having procedural questions in their work environment after they're licensed is that uh, they told somebody a rule that they remember because they can't uh, notarize the way somebody wants them to do something they want them to do because the laws have changed and even your legal department will disagree with you because they went to law school a long time ago and there's new notary laws that come out all the time. Um, to emphasize this, when I took the notary exam several decades ago, uh, there was a five page size 12 font manual. Now there's a 17 page manual here, size nine font. We uh, figured out that's approximately a 450% increase or introduction of new statutes uh, that notaries who are licensed prior to them being published have no idea what they are because there's no continuing education required uh, for notary publics once they're licensed. They can just keep renewing every four years for life like a driver's license. Never take that uh, written exam again. Just renew on time. And that's why we have the free newsletter with the videos that we post every month that will always have uh, updates in new laws and if there are new new laws we'll review old things where notaries seem to be getting in trouble or complacent due to uh, the fact that they're human beings and they're busy with other things they don't have time to get a copy of the law and read it and stay current okay so when when a question arises uh, for example say you're working in a bank and you want to know what to do about safety deposit boxes when you're asked to notarize them because people abandon their box. You would go through here. Now, in this table of contents, it's not a typical table of contents. It has section numbers on the left. Those are the executive laws section numbers that were uh, appointed under and under the guidelines that we need to follow. We don't follow them knowingly. We can be charged with uh, professional misconduct as a state officer and convicted of a class A misdemeanor, which is not nice for your resume. Of course, when you're ignorant, you can just have your license suspended or removed uh, once you've had a copy of the charges and the opportunity being heard. They don't refer you to criminal court if you're just ignorant. Okay, so back to banking law. We're looking through here and you know, you're looking for the topics over here on the left side. And uh, where is bank? There's a banking law, section 335. So. You get into the notary law, and it starts out with conduct. Some things I just said are in there. It's good to read this every now and then, right? To stay fresh. And so the section numbers are going by 131, 132. They get larger. Some of them are out of sequence because sometimes one section number refers to another, but pretty much they go in order. So we were looking for 335. I'll just keep scrolling. There it is, section number 335. And We'll see that if I go down, that's on page 11. So the pages are numbered, but the uh, table of contents is not numbered by page number, just by these executive law statute numbers that we must follow. So for people who work at banks, if the rental fee of any safety deposit box is not paid, or after the termination of the lease for such box, and at least 30 days after giving proper notice to the leasee, the leaser, the bank, May, in the presence of a notary public, open the safety deposit box, remove and inventory the contents. So when people abandon their box in the real world, it's probably empty sometimes. Um, and they probably haven't been able to pay their fee because their bank account's empty. So the notary public shall then file with the leaser a certificate under seal, which states the date of the opening of the safety deposit box, the name of the leasee, and a list of the contents. Within 10 days of the opening of the safety deposit box, a copy of this certificate must be mailed to the leasee at his or her last known 
postal address. Now there's no copy of what this thing looks like, so it just tells you the ingredients that are involved, and uh, that's the way you proceed there. This is something that we should probably review too since we're in here. Rule number 3113, civil practice, uh, civil practice, law and rules in a civil proceeding. It says this rule authorizes a deposition to be taken before a notary public in a civil proceeding. So what is a deposition? A little review here. A deposition is a hearing under oath out of court. So what happens in civil court is most things do not proceed to trial. Um, and they have these depositions and they don't uh, always have them in court. A deposition can be a hearing out of court. Um, and you've seen that in a movie uh, topic a lot or in TV shows when you see people having their testimony being recorded by a court recorder, somebody who types it up with a special little box. Um, anyway, uh, it's like the TV show Ally McBeal where it's usually a divorce case and the people are getting divorced and they have their attorneys and they're at a big conference table and the court reporter's there and the lawyer swears the person in, asks them to swear, and then they proceed to ask questions and the app the person answers who's being deposed who's going to be the affiant they're going to sign their affidavit this is all typed up days later and uh they get several copies of it and it has a nice cover on it and on the very last page is a jurat or an affidavit certificate that says sworn to before me this blank day of blank and the notary of course is going to go ahead and Ask the person, do you swear that the contents of this affidavit subscribed, subscribed by you is true? They sign the, uh, under the uh, affidavit. And then the person answers out loud, I do or like meaning, and they're good to go. But there's apparently the lawyer has the notary attend the deposition also. Uh, in some cases, we've had lawyers call and ask us to recommend notaries to attend depositions. And those procedures aren't here. They're not exam questions, so you'd be under the guidance of that attorney at law licensed in New York State that would tell you uh, what the procedure they desire to be, and you could attend. Um, we know that we're not allowed to marry people. Notary publics are not allowed to solemnize marriages in New York State or notarize them, where, like in Florida, you can. And also, this is kind of interesting. You know, uh, when people swear into office, it's just another affidavit under penalty of perjury. And the official oaths section of the law permits the oath of a public officer to be administered by a notary public. So we can swear other state officers in um, and who can uh, become public officers at the county, local, uh, municipality, and even the state level. Okay, so we're allowed to do that if anybody asks you to notarize their oath of office. As a matter of fact, you should already know that because when a notary public passes the exam, they're mailed an oath of office. And who has to notarize that? It says the county clerk or any notary public. Well, when you go to the county clerk, it's going to be a notary public. So the answer is a notary public notarizes that to make it admissible as evidence in a court of law and in this case, primarily recordable. Okay, so that's it for this review, and uh, we'll catch you next time.